let me quickly just uh, introduce uh, the the two gentlemen we have here and also give a little bit of a background around this uh, session so uh, we have jonathan who's the lead uh, of the wonderful appium project uh, jonathan uh, is the chair of the conference as well so jonathan and i were talking about uh, you know, for the Appium Light, uh, we, we would really love to have someone who's recently started contributing to, to the Appium project and kind of uh, hear from their experience, uh, you know, what, what was their experience like to contribute to the Appium project. And Jonathan uh, recommended that we should certainly try and get uh, Ian. Uh, Ian is uh, the uh, youngest uh, and the most, uh, I would say, uh, uh, strong contributor recently to the Appium project. And so we thought, uh, you know, we could to hear from him and Jonathan also, uh, you know, agreed to kind of do this as a fireside chat, uh, you know, so, so uh, without too much of a delay, I think I will hand it over to Jonathan and I to take it forward from here. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Naresh. Yeah, this was a, this was a fun idea. Uh, I was a big fan of it. Uh, when you brought it up and um, I think it's always, you know, good to remember that Appium is an open source project and we really rely on on contributors coming from from all places. And, uh, you know, some contributors contribute to Appium as, as part of their job. And, you know, I'm fortunate to have the support of of uh, my employer uh, Headspin to, you know, for me to keep working on Appium and a lot of other of our contributors are in the same boat. Um, and uh, this this summer, uh, this well in the northern hemisphere, this last summer uh, we just had, uh, I was able to bring Ian on board uh, as an intern um, to do some Appium contribution, and uh, he had you know obviously no experience with Appium before, so I thought it'd be interesting to talk about uh, Ian's experience of kind of onboarding as a contributor, with obviously the goal of maybe inspiring some other folks uh to come and contribute to appium and and uh hopefully and i and this is something you you really have to say uh that it's it's not too scary to get started well you can say whatever you want i don't want to i don't want to be too uh dictatorial here but um yeah so uh Naresh already introduced me but i why don't you um give us a a, a few sentences about yourself just so we kind of get a picture of, of where you're at in your in your life and career Sure. Um, yeah, thank you, Jonathan, for inviting me for this conversation. I'm really excited to talk about Appium and some of the work that I did on Appium this past summer. Um, uh, so my name is Ian. Uh, I'm a third year computer engineering student at the University of Waterloo um, in Canada. And uh, most recently, uh, I worked with Jonathan as a part of an internship for Headspin. And we worked on Appium and Appium related uh, tasks and just um, Appium contributions and stuff. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for that background. Um, yeah. So I had the opportunity to work on both some, you know, internal projects at Headspin as well as the Appium open source project. So obviously here we're focusing on some of that uh open source work. So yeah, let's jump into some some questions I had prepared. Uh, you know. Obviously, we're just doing this over Zoom, but everyone um, who's watching can imagine that, you know, we're both sitting, uh, you know, in couches next to each other with an appropriate beverage and just kind of uh, chilling and um, chatting with one another. So, uh, yeah, I and I, I think you learned about Appium for the first time when you when you uh, saw the internship opportunity. Um, so what was kind of your first thought about the project? I don't know if you just clicked on the website. You know, did it did it strike you in any way? Did it make sense what Appium was trying to do? Yeah. Um, so previously, um, I had done an internship as a uh, QA developer, and so I had done some web automation with Selenium, and I never really came across Appium before this. But um, when I did uh, read the job description and search up about Appium and learn get to know it a bit, it made complete sense to me because. Um, I thought like Selenium was a great way to automate the web and it was very easy to use and very um, developer friendly. And yeah, to me, it just made sense what Appium was trying to do and how it was trying to uh, have use the same Selenium functionality, but with mobile devices. And to me, it always made sense. 
Right on. Yeah, I guess, yeah, if you had some background with Selenium, um, I mean, that's kind of our goal is to make it easy for folks that have some experience and knowledge with Selenium to, to get going. So um, that's, uh, that's perfect. Um, I mean, I guess besides your background as somebody who'd used Selenium before, did you have any, um, you know, coding or development background or experience that you felt made it either easier or maybe more difficult when you started to approach the Appium code base? Yeah, so um, as a part of, I guess, my curriculum, uh, we do le learn some sort of uh, programming and just uh, software engineering and software engineering, I guess, uh, concepts. And uh, I have I had previously done a developer internship for another company. And so I did uh, kind of get used to um, navigating code bases and figuring my way through the code base, but definitely even even with some experience prior, uh, it was a bit of a challenge initially for the first week or so, just figuring out um, where everything is because Appium is pretty big and it was, uh, it's probably the biggest code base that I've worked in just because uh, you have to be able to, I guess, you have to know like where everything goes and where everything is. So definitely it was kind of, uh, it was definitely a bit tough just to figure out where you have to, where, where to begin and uh, where do you actually start writing the code? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on that point, um, tell us a little bit about what your, your first project was, um, with, with Appium and, and how did you, you know, figure out where to begin, where to start, you know, adding code. I mean, like you said, Appium is split up into a number of different, uh, repositories and NPM modules and things like that. So it can be a bit hard to figure out where to make that first change. So how did you go about doing that? Mm -hmm. So I guess my first uh, commit and push was a part of a larger task I was working on. And the task was related to um, adding the run command to the Appium client interface. And uh, so one of the subtasks of that larger tasks was uh, to expose a scripts field uh, inside the package JSON of a of a of a driver and so the task itself wasn't too hard but um definitely the most challenging part was okay so how does the driver get called um where should you put it in the driver uh, in the driver's package dot json and yeah just figuring out uh so that it's just figuring where to actually expose the field and how to properly expose it and i guess uh, the way that I went about it was um, just um, console.logging slash uh, debugging my way through it. So figuring out where existing um, Appium client interface commands were written and how they were written and what were some of the existing functions and helper functions that existed in the code base and just starting from the top console, I guess, logging my way uh, to when the drivers actually get called and then figuring out, oh, okay, so this is how it's called. So I can place uh, the field here and it's going to fetch it like that. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, I love that strategy too. Just kind of start adding some logging and you can begin to get a sense of the flow of, of the, the code's execution that way. And, um, you know, you can just, you can read code all day long, but not necessarily know how it all relates until you start, start running it and, and changing things. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, uh, you were working on this um, project, uh, but there were other people in the, the Appium open source, you know, team, the group of maintainers and whatever that are interacting with you on this, obviously myself, because, um, you know, uh, I was, you know, helping you with your internship, but then people that weren't at Headspin and worked for other companies who helped maintain the Appium project. So, you know, what was it like working on kind of an open source team with, you know, random folks spread out all over the world, um, rather than kind of everyone working on the same team at a single company under a single, you know, reporting structure, et cetera? Yeah, I, I found it to be a very cool and unique experience because usually um, every time that I've worked in a professional environment, it's been within 
with people within the same organization. And so it's just a really cool and unique experience to see uh, people from Headspin, from uh, people from Browser Stack, people from Sauce Labs and different organizations and just individual contributors uh, coming together and working on one purpose, which is to uh, make Appium better. And everybody was super helpful. And, you know, I never um, got the impression that I was uh, asking for too much or, you know, reaching out too much. Every, everybody was um, collaborating with each other. I was, um, I, I got reached out a lot too by some other people and everybody was just uh, very friendly and helpful and definitely, uh, you know, it, it didn't feel too much like we were working that I guess that we were too different or working from a different organization or from a different company. I guess everybody had the goal and mindset of, okay, how do we improve Appium? And now let's make that happen. Awesome. Yeah. Glad it, glad it felt that way. That's been my experience as well. Um, so, you know, obviously I'm trying to hype up Appium 2.0 a lot. It's in development and most of the actual like code development seems to be nearing completion. There's a lot of work to do yet on, on, you know, documentation and making sure Appium desktop is compatible and things like that. So, uh, unsure, you know, right now exactly when the official release will be, um, but soon, but you had a chance to work on Appium 2.0, um, as it was being developed and had a chance to add some, you know, features to it that everyone who uses Appium 2.0 will, will hopefully have a chance to use. Um, so, you know, what was your favorite part about working on Appium 2.0 or what were you excited about with the, the idea or direction of, of Appium 2.0? Um, I guess, um, uh, the main thing that I just loved is that, uh, what about Appium 2.0 is that it's no longer about just like iOS or Android devices or just a specific device type. Uh, what I really liked and what I was really excited by was the vision and the fact that, you know, you can literally use Appium on to add automation capabilities to anything. And so just the fact that some of the work that I did previous, uh, for this past summer related to adding automation capabilities to a custom piece of hardware. And just uh, so just seeing that come to life and seeing how Appium 2.0 made it come to life and uh, was very exciting. And just uh, it, it just, it, I guess it just made me realize, you know, uh, this is the right way to go with Appium and just the power of Appium and what it could actually do. Sweet. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll hear more about this, uh, this hardware, um, project, this, uh, Appium driver that, that you were working on. Um, I guess in terms of like what you sort of took away, you know, from your time contributing so far, um, do you feel like changed or, you know, improved, uh, you know, ho hopefully not, you know, worse off as a developer by, by working on Appium, any specific things that you learned or, will take away with you while, um, you know, reading or writing code in the future? Yeah, um, it's definitely made me uh, put more emphasis on writing good code and not just code that works and putting emphasis on writing readable code and code that adheres to the code bases rules and code that fits with the code base. So I think that's one important thing. So you like something might look good, but if it's not following the conventions of the code base, then it might just seems too out of place. So it's definitely um, made me realize the importance of maintaining code readability and ma maintaining some sort of uh, code, some some sort of uh, guideline for the code base. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, and I mean, for everyone who's listening, I guess that goes for for test test suite code as well, not just uh, code inside of Appium. Um, I think that's really important. Um, as we, you know, start to get to our last few questions here, um, what would you say to anyone else who's interested in contributing to the Appium project? Uh, any pointers on getting started or things to be aware of? Yeah, I personally recommend everybody who's interested to do so. I think it's a great experience and I personally had a lot of fun doing it and something that I had so much fun in that I expect myself to continue doing, but for, um, for, for newcomers, I would definitely say 
uh, it's okay to feel overwhelmed. It, it is a pretty big code base and there's a lot of stuff to uh, figure out and click in. So what I would say is if you are starting to contribute um, or want, want to contribute, try to pick up a smaller task, a task that would allow you, I guess, enough time to just uh, get used to the code base, read the code base and just uh, figure things out and then go on to taking tackling bigger ta tasks. But definitely, if you're not used to it yet, pick up something small, um, try to find a solution for it and try to navigate your way through the code base and learn how that is really connected. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you've had a good enough time that uh, you, you're hopefully going to stay connected with the Appium community. Um, we uh, would certainly appreciate your, you know, continued contributions and, and help. Um, it's been awesome to see some of these uh, features uh, that you've added to help support the Appium 2.0 command line interface and things like that. Um, so I guess to, to wrap up here, um, I'm aware and uh, want to make everyone else aware that you also have uh, a talk at Appium Conf coming up in uh, a few weeks. So tell us a little bit about that talk and uh, get us excited about it so that folks can uh, can make sure to attend. Yeah, so um, the talk that I'm going to be giving for Appium Conf is going to be related to, uh, it's going to be sort of a case study slash overview of uh, of how I used Appium 2.0 over this past summer and how I used Appium 2.0 to automate a custom piece of hardware. And so I think it's just, it's gonna be a really interesting talk and uh, just in, just to highlight and showcase uh, the capabilities of Appium 2.0. And um, yeah, I guess just to also, like, I guess give sort of like a force insight into what you can actually do with Appium 2.0 and its possible use cases. Awesome, cool. Uh, well, thanks a lot, Ian. I know that we just have one or two minutes left and I uh, wanted to check in the, the Q&A box here to see if anybody has asked us any questions while we still have a minute. Um, looks like we do have one question. Um, sh Naresh, should I, should I answer this or I'm just kind of taking yep, the reins yep. here? <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah. So um, Prasanta asks about what some of the features are for Appium 2.0, um, and you know, one minute is not enough time to go into all that. Um, but luckily, I've been doing um, webinars for probably literally years on what Appium 2.0 is going to be about. It's been a long time coming, so there's lots of information out there that you can search up. But just kind of the the big idea, I guess I'll say, of Appium 2.0 is that um, we can now have uh, kind of uh, third-party Appium drivers and plugins that anybody can write and share with the world um, and make it easy to, for other people to find and download and and kind of import those uh, drivers or plugins into their own Appium server to um, add additional functionality. So as Ian was saying, for example, um, the, you know, this was an internal project, so, um, you know, it may not be relevant to the wider community, but he was able to create an Appium driver for a custom piece of hardware. Now, if that piece of hardware was something that, you know, the whole world had a need to automate, uh, it would be very easy using Appium 2.0 for people to pull down that driver that Ian wrote and to uh, have Appium access uh, to that hardware. So um, that's one of the things that I'm most, most excited about. Um, okay. Well, I think that's about all we have time for. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for uh, for listening to us uh, chat with one another, and I hope that you've learned that uh, you know we're uh, we're a friendly bunch at the Appium team, and um, always wanting to support folks who uh, who are wanting to get into contribution. Cool. Thanks, Jonathan, and thanks, Ian. I think there's one question that uh, you know there's someone from the attendees asking uh, is uh, basically there are a few sessions that are happening at the same time. How do we uh, go through and access them? So don't worry about that. If you've missed some sessions, uh, all these sessions are getting recorded and they will be uploaded uh, and be accessible from uh, the Confingen website and the YouTube channel as well. Uh, so you'd be able to uh, watch these sessions later if you miss them or if you want to go back and rewatch something, they'll all be available for you to watch later for free.